I want to share with you today some uh, tips to help you understand what menu pricing is all about. You might have read my article last night on LinkedIn that I explained the differences between the four different pricing methods that we have in bookkeeping. And you may have noticed in that that I spoke about a software that has been introduced to help you work out your menu prices. Now, that software is, is fantastic to, uh, to work out your menu but not to help you truly understand the power of menu pricing. And to do that, I want to share with you an experiment that I've shared um, a couple of times on the workshops, but never fully. And this was an experiment carried out by uh, two guys called Joe Huber and Christopher Puto in the 80s, um, when they were both working at Duke University. Now, Christopher and Joe took a group of students and they offered them two different laggers. They offered them a, a budget lager at uh, $1.80 and they offered them a premium lager at $2.60. Now when offered these two laggers, 33% of the students chose the budget and 66% of the students chose the premium. Now what Joe and Christopher did was they started to manipulate how people chose, not by changing the actual offering, but how it was positioned. So by simply putting things either before or after it, they changed the number of people who would be prepared to buy that premium brand. So in the first experiment, what they did was they added a super budget can and they charged $1.60 for this super budget. They still had the, the bargain one at $1.80 and they still had the premium one at $2.60. Now suddenly what happened is nobody bought the new super budget that they brought in. But what the new super budget did is it moved some people, some of that 66% from the premium down to the budget. This time 47% chose the budget and 53% chose the premium. So simply by bringing a new offering in at the beginning but not changing any of the other two offerings, we've managed to move people from the top end down to the middle towards what Christopher and Joel called the Goldilocks option. Now, they wondered whether the same thing would happen if they introduced something at the top end. So they take away the new super premium, they have the budget can, uh, they have the, the premium can, and they introduce a super premium. So we've still got the budget at $1.80, we still have the premium at $2.60, and we've introduced a new super premium at $3.40. Now suddenly what happens is nobody is buying the budget can. That original 33% people who would buy that budget can, nobody is buying it any longer. What we've done is we've moved most of the people to the middle option, that Goldilocks option, but put this time as the premium. Nothing has changed, the taste, the brand, nothing has changed between this budget and the premium. All we've done is add a new option at the end, which 10% of people have now chosen, but the bulk, the 90%, have now moved from the, 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 to the premium in the middle. This means that simply, not by changing the offering, but how it's positioned, Joe and Christopher managed to, to show uh, an increase of 24% to the premium simply by putting a super premium at the end. Now these are the kind of hints and tips that software won't show you alone. These are the things that once we understand this, it allows us to not only improve our pricing, but allows us to offer an extra service to our clients to improve their pricing because this stuff doesn't just work in the bookkeeping market, it'll work in your client's market too.